comments would be fucking pissed. Recording. Welcome back to Little Snickers, baby. I'm Mike Rainey. Next I'm to me is John Del Calger. Cal Don Jala. <laughs> um, I don't know where Jake is. Normally, Jake is our producer, our third mic, the man, but I'm a little concerned we haven't heard from Jake. I'm sure he'll fucking come bursting through that door at some point with some valid explanation. He probably found out about a fucking Roy Rogers somewhere in the turnpike that nobody knows about. But um, I'm, I don't think this is time for jokes. I'm concerned. This is not like him. It is, it is weird, man, because Jake is very reliable, and uh, I, yeah, I'm going to be honest, I'm a little bit concerned. But in the meantime, we're going to keep plowing through. We have our friend Danny Dubs from Dad Me Podcast filling in the producer duties tonight. Danny, welcome to the show, brother. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. I'm, I'm right. so pumped that I was uh, your first first point of contact. Once, the first uh, call. Once Thank Jake, you for uh, filling in. Tragic, I mean, went missing. Um, by the way... Uh, this was on the floor when I came in. I don't know. Huh. Probably another bill. <laughs> but I'm sure Jake will come through that door at any at any second. Now. I hope so. Maybe his phone's broke. He will. No problem. Just see what they want from me. This is it a bill? Oh my god! What is it? Have you heard about the serial killer that we have here in Delco now? Yeah. We have an honest-to-goodness serial killer, and they're calling him the Delco Diddler. Yeah, I heard all about him. Um, Jake's been kidnapped by the Delco Diddler. Are you fucking serious? Um, this is a ransom note addressed to the both of us, John. Fuck. Dear dickheads, in case you haven't figured it out by now, and I'm willing to bet you morons have not, I, the Delco Diddler, have kidnapped your beloved Jake Matera. You motherfucker. For starters, I wish the newspapers would stop calling me the Delco Diddler. I have killed 11 men. The diddling is secondary to the murder. I have barely wiggled any wieners, but I digress. This is a good point. Shut up. Fucking Jake's missing, dude. Anywho, I despise how the three of you make fun of people like me on your little podcast. To voice my displeasure... I have chosen to kidnap Jake and hold him captive. During his captivity, I am going to feed him carb-heavy foods to plump him up so that he can appear on my as my 12th and final victim who will be featured in my forthcoming Beefcake Firefighter calendar. After his photo shoot, I will leave his corpse in a Wendy's parking lot somewhere in the tri-state area. Oh my God, there's so many. In the meantime, enjoy your podcast without Jake. I am sure whoever fills in for him will be quite capable. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to feed my firefighter. Ha, 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 ha. Ain't I a little stinker? Signed, the Delco Diddler. I mean, that's a great calendar. Can I see that? Can I see this? Are there any spelling errors? Let me tell you something, you piece of shit, because I know you're watching right now. If you touch one little hair on Jake's little head, I swear to God, John and I will make the Rodney King beating seem like a Swedish massage. Yeah, I'm fucking pissed. I mean, he's probably just misunderstood. You know, I don't, I don't know if we want to jump to. You know. this, this better be, this better be a, a fre freaking joke. I hope it's a freaking joke as well, because if it's not. This sucks. Jake's missing and he's going to get killed so this uh, nasty freak can make his uh, the calendar. Uh, calendar. I kind of do want to see the calendar, though. John, shut up. Jake, if you're watching this, we're going to find you and we're going to save you. Mark our words. Maybe. All right, well, I don't want to let the people down because I know they want to see a podcast. John? I guess we got to get on with the show. All right. The oh. show must go oh on. My God. Dude, I what hope if Jake's out. I hope Jake can hear us. Jake, I'm... if you can hear us. Blink. Blink. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, I know you're out there, and he would want us to go on. So, oh, fuck, dude. What if this is the Impractical Jokers podcast, and fucking Jake's going to miss it? Oh, shit. I, well. <sighs> man, now I don't. Fuck us, man. I almost don't want it to be. Well, well, we'll f f Jake, we're going to flip the fucking coin in your honor, dude. Good to go? Yeah. 
fucking call it in the air, man. All right. How do you think that went? Fuck. Another fucking serial killer. All right, Jake, you're not going to miss an Impractical Jokers podcast. We're going to do a regular stinker for you. Lucky Jake. Jake, you lucked out. <laughs> I can't believe they kidnapped him, man. Me neither. I can't believe they really for real did it. God, what do you think they're going to feed him to pump him up? I don't know, but I wish I was getting some of that. <laughs> I walked in the house today with Arby's and dinner was on the table. Uh-oh, I had two meals at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> How often could you eat two dinners every day, or is it a delicacy? Uh, with this, I mean, with this is like some Hello Fresh uh, bullshit portion. You know what I mean? Yeah, I ate, I'm I've eaten dinners twice for the past three weeks. Yeah, dude, fucking, they, they should make a good buy fresh for fat fucks like us. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like the entire fucking dry ice container is just all for us in one sitting. Yeah. And it's all microwavable. Hmm. We got we got Hello Fresh for like a month, and it was just everything would go to waste every week. My wife would make like one meal, and then we'd all oh, get too busy. Oh, you wouldn't be concerned yeah. with making it again, yeah. No, even all the other stuff too. It's because like you know she works. She was working like five and six days a week, and then I would do the same, and like most of the shit would just go to waste. Yeah, that sucks. But it tastes good. It is delicious. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it is good. It's usually the first thing I eat. Yeah, in the day at five thirty p.m. <laughs> and <laughs> what time do you get up? Anywhere between twelve thirty and three o'clock. All right, why don't we do this? So I'm um, I get up early, so I'm an early riser. How about I look for Jake during the days, and you look for him during the nights? Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, because that's right. Because Jake's missing, and we got to <laughs> find him. We're, Jake, we're gonna get you, buddy. We're coming for you. Don't worry. <laughs> We're we're gonna find you. We're gonna bring your uh, your diddler to justice. Yeah, and we're gonna bring you your f- your favorite snacks when we find you too. We don't want to bring him any more snacks because the diddler's trying to plump him up for his uh, calendar. But, uh, well, I hope he likes the food he's getting. I'm sure it's, it's good, man. But Jake, we hope to hear from you soon, buddy. Hang in there. Keep the faith. Enjoy enjoy what whatever he puts in front of you, and just know that we're on our way. You're gonna be fine, Jake. Trust us. Now, John, so I'm sorry you didn't get your, your impractical joker for tonight. It's all right. We also didn't meet Murr last week. Oh, my God. I felt so bad. On Friday, last Friday, Jake had proposed. I'm sorry. R.I.P. Jake. John had proposed this to us that Murr from fucking Impractical Jokers was at a bookstore near Philly. And he had asked if we could go with him. But I no, had to work. I in... wasn't even able to go. No. No. I ended up down down the beach. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Where I, I, I'm betting there wasn't an impractical Joker within a 150 mile <laughs> radius, probably. <laughs> so we're gonna find another one of Murr's book signings, and I'm gonna take you there. I promise you, I'll take you there. It's like me and Murr are uh, magnets of the same pole, and as he nears my area, I'm forced to go further south. Does that make you hotter for the Jokers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> now I gotta figure. Gotta buy one of those anti-magnet suits. <laughs> <laughs> you think you'd have to get it in big and tall, <laughs> dude? I would have got tackled by Murr's fucking security guard last week if I had gone. Oh my god, dude! That would have been. I mean, just the CCTV footage of that would have been Patreon <laughs> content for a month. How angry would you have been if? Um, I had a GoPro on and I was meeting him, but I sent, but I showed you the video as though the perspective from you. Yeah, I mean that would be sick. I could watch it in VR, right? Yeah, you could. That would be tight. Whoa. Oh man, uh, VR and practical jokers. Any app developers out there? Any game developers? <laughs> I might have a million dollar idea for you. Oh, I wonder if they. It's have called it. Meet the Jokers, and you're the butt of all their jokes. Oh my god. Oh my god. Actually. We can't put this out. We always if make a million ideas that, on here, and somebody's bound to fucking rip us off. You know what? I don't even want the money from it. Just give me a free copy of the game. <laughs> you know what would be cool? Like uh, a VR murder game where you could kill people. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft Murder Simulator 2020. <laughs> 
I'm an ideas man, John. <laughs> yeah, we have different <laughs> ideas. And I think that is most video games anyway. Yeah, true. <laughs> Fuck, maybe I am an idiot. <laughs> what if you could pretend to kill people? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get to our stinker tonight. Okay. You know, I mentioned last week that I was going to have to come out here with another bad bitch. You said that? I did. Damn. You don't remember me saying that? Is it because you were so horny for one? It might have been, dude. I, I cannot help but falling in love with every bad bitch that we covered, dude. I know. It's so it's hard to disease. not fall in love with these ladies. <laughs> what do you think it's called? Oh, um, horn. I, I got gout of the heart. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm to blame. <laughs> yeah, the gout of the heart. So... I have it for every female stinker that we have covered on here, and this lady is no di- different. Is she like another mum who Mm-mm. is not attractive? So, this lady was put to death at the age of 42. Whoa! Yeah. Never heard of her. <laughs> who she, is she? Eileen Warnos. What era? Pretty when, recent. Really? So, she was caught in the early 90s. Okay, yeah. So, modern, so, modern in the sense that it was while I was alive. Yes. Yeah. I know you had fucking teased me pretty hard for calling the '90s modern last week. So, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. But yes, Eileen Warnos, and she was a bad bitch. The crazy thing is, her murder spree only lasted one year. Damn, how many bodies did she get in one year? Am I S- jumping to? No, no. Well, I'll give it to you seven. Damn, that's. Pretty prolific. She got it in. Compared to a lot of other people. It is. And it's such a short period of time. Yeah. She got it in. But you're going to fall in love with her when I tell you about this. But the reason why she killed them was um, well, part of it. She wanted to kill them. But two, the motive was usually robbery. So she can bring home the bacon for her babe. Damn. Tyra. Right. Her babe was named Tyra Moore. Tyra? Yep. And it's spelled, and I wish it was pronounced this way, but it's not. I double checked. It's spelled Tyria. <laughs> that Man. sounds like the disease you have. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm stricken with diarrhea. <laughs> I fall in love with every bad bitch we cover here on Little Stinkers, dude. I might have to run to the bathroom because of my diarrhea. <laughs> but yeah, dude, her, uh, her her babe's name is, sp- is spelled T Y R I A. Tyree. I'm going to see Tyree. Make sure you wear a diaper, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but her name is pronounced Tyra Moore. So okay. All right, backtracking a little bit. Uh, and these are both ladies. Yes, lovely ladies. Uh, they met in a le- in a lesbian bar in uh, in Port Orange, Florida, called Zodiac. Okay. And I get a little ahead of myself. So Wait, get- Port Orange has got to be the Gulf, right? So no, uh, Port Orange is on the east coast of Florida. So okay. the crimes happen in Central Far- Florida and the east coast. So Port Orange is. Close to Daytona Beach. Okay. So they were chilling. They were both like biker babes. They Whoa. love that kind of culture. Oh my god, dude! And I don't want to get ahead of myself here. So I'm I'm getting so hard right now, dude. I'm I'm rock hard for for Eileen. Tyree is hitting hard. Are these both white lesbian biker babes? Yep. Damn. This is different. This is a new category. Dog, I call them biker babes, but there's I've never seen any any kind of evidence indicating that they were into motorcycles. They just, <laughs> <laughs> so screw to full disclosure. But they chilled at biker bars. They were like groupies. Yeah. For it, bikers. It was just it was just their environment. And I'm gonna put up pictures of the place where they chill at the most, uh, called the last stand. That was their bar. Nice. I'm sorry, the last resort. Even nicer. It is. Maybe, wait, is it the last stand? The last stand, maybe. All right, my bad. So, <laughs> yeah, not as nice as last resort. But. <laughs> All right, Dan, could you double check on that? Type in Eileen Warnos last stand or last resort. All right, so February 29th, 1956, Eileen Warnos was, was born. And by the way, her name is spelled A I L E E N. All right, so uh, February 29th, 1956, leap year, baby. Whoa. Yeah. Damn, they put her to death at 42 divided by 4. <laughs> so she <Something> was... Criminals. <laughs> she was 10. <laughs> All right. So she was born in Rochester, Michigan. 
her parents, everybody, everybody's parents who we cover on here are super fucked up. All right. But she might take the cake. Oh, I thought it was going to be the different, uh, another direction and like had kind, loving parents. Nah. The last resort. Bob. Yes. Last resort. That's the good Cut one. Cut my life into pieces. <laughs> this is the last resort. Dun, dun. The, the last stand was a hot dog stand that I used to go to. So I'm sorry. I had those confused. <laughs> R.I.P. The Last Stand. They closed it down on McDade Boulevard about five years ago. Oh, man. God, the best fucking hot dogs. Was it literally, is there no more hot dog stands near here? There's there's actually a great one called The Hot Dog Stand, probably two miles from here. Well, that fucking place sounds like it was run by an idiot now. <laughs> it's not, it wasn't even The Last Stand. The Last Stand. The Last Stand where that was and The Hot Dog Stand are maybe a mile apart. Wow. So... I have diarrhea for these bad bitches, and I have diarrhea for the last stand. So R.I.P. Last stand. But the hot, dude, I gotta take you guys from there. There sometime. The hot dog stand is incredible. Incredible, fucking hot dogs. Incredible, chili, meatballs, fucking hot sausages. Anything you could want. Damn, I never knew about that place. I'll pick it mm-hmm. up next time I'm coming. Oh my god. Well, dude, they're only open till I think like two o'clock. Fuck that business model. I hope they fucking and close. Dog, here's you're gonna you're gonna respect. It's run by a bad bitch. The reason why the lady yeah, has a bad to, bitch that has to be in bed by three p.m. <laughs> fuck her. <laughs> fuck she's got she's got to pick up her kids from school. We dude. sell hot dogs until we run out, and that's where we fucking <laughs> God shut them. <laughs> fucking stay open normal hours. She, open at two. Who the fuck is getting hot dogs <laughs> before ten a.m.? Danny, could you look up the hot dog stands hours? I know it's something insane. Like it's they're open. Piss me the fuck off. I'm gonna tell you why, John. They're open from 11 to like three. So look at Hot Dog Stand McDay Boulevard. So they're 11 to three, and I read an article about the place one time where the owner said she's only open for such short hours because she, she's the sole caregiver for her children. 11 to five. All right, 11 to 5. Does that help you at all? Oh, you don't get up till 5.30. It's more acceptable. That's fine. All right. That's fine. Even though, if you think about it, it's actually fucking retarded <laughs> to close your business right when everyone else is getting off of work. That's prime Jesus hot dog Christ. time. Yeah, dude. All right. But it's better than you said it was. All right. So that's the hot dog stand. RIP the last stand. And the ladies would chill at the last resort. All right. So getting back to her parents... Her parents, when they got married, were fucking... Her dad was 16. Whoa. And her mom was 14. <laughs> Those it's not even, like, the appropriate era for that to be happening. <laughs> That's... This was in 1950-something? This was 1954. She was born in 1956. The dad was 16. Leo Pittman, who... I guess, yeah. All right. So, the they were... um. They're kids. They're they're children. Yeah. Having children. Uh, Fucked up thing was, thankfully, Eileen never met Leo. Do you want to know why? How? No. Yeah. Why? He impregnated her mother, and during that time, he got locked up. So her father went to jail for raping a seven-year-old. Oh, Jesus Christ. When he was fucking 17? That was 19... I don't know when he went to jail, but he hung himself in jail in 1969. So this would be 13 years after she was born. So she hadn't met him. He was, he, he he was, was in just jail been for a decade. Home. Yeah, he was in yeah, jail yeah. forever. And he hung himself in 1969. Took him long enough. Yeah. <laughs> so the mom wasn't equipped to deal with the kids either. So or Diane, that was the mom's name. Diane wasn't equipped to deal with the kids either. So she sent them to live with the grandparents. Unfortunately, the grandparents weren't any fucking better. Damn, were they still in Michigan, or is it how she ended up in Florida? Yeah, they're still in Michigan. Okay. She, the reason why she ends up in Florida is because she does a lot of hitchhiking. Sick. Yeah, I'm t- you're, you're going to love this bitch by the, time, by the end of this episode, dude. All I right. guarantee you. This is, she represents everything I love about Florida. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the mom basically abandons them her and her brother, Keith. Keith is a year older. And at every turn, this poor kid, Eileen, is getting fucking fucked over somehow. 
to small degrees and also really insane fucked up degrees yeah. by every person she comes across. Her grandmother is named Britta. Now, interesting side note, the mom, Diane, convinces her two children, which are Eileen and Keith, that the grandparents are actually their parents. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the grandparents, uh, Britta is the grandmom, and Lowry is the grandfather. First name Lowry? Yeah, he was like, I think he was Finnish. It's spelled like okay. L-A-U-R-I. Finnish, I ain't even start yet. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> See that? You're not even mad about the hot dog stand anymore. <laughs> no, I am. Thanks for bringing it back up. And Britta, like water, like spelled like the water? Yeah, she had no filter. <laughs> uh, close, it had two T's. All right. All right, so both Lowry and Britta were pretty fucked up themselves. All right. Both were alcoholics. Britta seemed to really enjoy taking care of the children, though, especially Eileen. So she at least had some sem- semblance of love there, but unfortunately, yeah. the pop-pop was a real cocksucker. Emotionally, physically, and sexually abusive. Damn. And... To make matters even worth it, worse, in March of 1960, they adopted these poor kids. Damn. So she was six years old. Yep. Just getting put into a house where she's gonna get fucking Dog. molested. It's, for it's the next so fu- ten years. It, there, everything fucked up that could happen to a person happened to Eileen Warnos. Man. So 1960, they get adopted. 1967. At this point, she's 11 years old. She starts fucking acting out because of all the fucked up shit that's happening to her. And she has a hard time connecting to her peers because she's being so abused so so extensively that it's hard to like even try to form friendships when you got what you got going on at home. Yeah. So at the age of eleven, she starts getting into cigarettes, fucking drugs. <laughs> getting into cigarettes. <laughs> Does that sound fucked up? <laughs> Starts getting into cigarettes. What age did you get into cigarettes? Spirit animal. Eighteen. I waited till I was legal, baby. Oh my god. <laughs> Were you watching the clock? Oh yeah. Seven Eleven guy wouldn't sell me until it turned midnight. Dog, uh, I've never smoked a cigarette. That's fucking wild, dude. I've been to rehab and I haven't smoked a cigarette. That's like <laughs> what you do at rehab. I never smoked a cigarette, man. That's crazy, man. Being that like you've got you would get fucking blacked out drunk right I dude uh, even I, in your heart I, of hearts you were like that's bad for I me. hated it my my mom and my aunts used to do it around me constantly and they would smoke in the car they would smoke in the house everywhere yeah that would probably turn and I developed such a hatred for although as I got older when I would hang out in dive bars I grew to enjoy the smell of the smoke because of the nostalgia the yeah sp- in the bar yeah which is part it, of the yeah. part of the bar atmosphere but, dude, I was in rehab for for cocaine and alcohol abuse and later became addicted to opiates, but I've never smoked a cigarette. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Yeah. So I got that going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So fucked up shit continues to happen. Um, also... She Wait, admi- she got into cigarettes. Cigarettes and were the other, gateway what to other everything. What other drugs? All right, just anything and everything that could happen because fucking she's candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was fucking shoving goobers up her butthole, dude. It was it was awful. But she was into all kinds of fucked up shit too, and plus, like part of the abuse that she suffered at home involved like her grandfather withholding food from her. Oh my god, dude! And also, like, dude, the extent of the fucked up shit that he would do to her, it knew no boundaries. Because one of the things that I read about him doing was she she brought home a cat, and he said they couldn't keep it, but they weren't going to let it go. So he drowned the cat in front of her. Oh my god, this is the only way. <laughs> <laughs> this was her hot dog stand closing at five p.m. <laughs> Dude, you can literally just put a cat outside and it will never come back. So, there's there's even more fucked up cat shit that I'm not even going to get into because it's like it would just it would make you nauseous. At this house? How many cats did she bring home after that? <laughs> did you learn your lesson the first time? Apparently not, man. What 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 else? All right, he would like tie cat tails together and <laughs> 
<laughs> he's back. That's all it took. Oh my you fucking God. piece of I'm shit. I'm lightheaded after that. Jesus Christ. He's a certified stinker now, too. Sink, stinker Dog, stamp of approval. He would tie the cattails together and then throw them over the clothesline. <laughs> and have, have them fight, you piece of shit. You you disgust me. <laughs> that is, I, I'm, I'm a dog guy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the most creative, evil, fucked up <laughs> things, dude. Just being that drunk and seeing two cats, just to be able to tie their fucking tails together is a challenge. <laughs> fucked up, man. Dude, that's exactly what I was thinking. Tying two cats that don't want to. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's so hard. God damn. All right, so he he had was a potential sailor. to be yeah a fucking he's a stinker in his own right yeah like God like just truly evil shit this motherfucker would do all right so now we're we're getting to 1970 and at this point she start, she's becoming promiscu- promiscuous and she would go down to this area that kids in her school used to hang out at called the pits <laughs> and. Is that where they would make out and fuck there? Yeah, that's where they did all that shit. The pits. A lot of cigarette oh use. A lot of cigarette <laughs> usage. Really fucking out of control. But they would go down there, and she would try to relate to these kids in any way possible. At this point, um, her development was stunted because of all the abuse she had endured. So she really struggled to connect with these kids. So she saw that, like, okay, they're drinking, they're doing drugs. And if I use my body, at least the boys will be into me. So she started to do, to do that, and she earned the nickname. I shouldn't say earned, but like they gave her the nickname for what she did for cigarettes. Uh, they called her Cigarette Pig. <laughs> Dude, any kind of pig is funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, it's so sad how she went about the getting these cigarettes. But <laughs> I mean, cum pig. Cigarette pig. I, I was actually on the verge of nicknaming you Nike ACG pig. <laughs> <laughs> this is my new Instagram handle. Thank you. Uh, but she could have just bought the cigarettes, right? Or did she have, not have money? Dirt poor, man. Okay. So. All right. She got uh, entrepreneur's mindset. She does. <laughs> so she's getting into all this fucked up shit. She desperately wants people to like like her. Um. So now that she's getting into drugs and alcohol, you know, more and more fucked up shit is happening. And people are just taking advantage of her left and right. There's a local creep who happened to be a friend of her grandfather's. So there's this guy named Chief. This was the guy that's rumored to have done this. So he seems like one of these guys that lets underage kids drink at his fucking house to be, the, be like the fucking cool adult. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's just some middle one age. person at a time. Like, just this girl comes over and drinks. Dude, he invited a whole group of kids over to his house on a fucking school night. So, he's having these kids get fucked up at his house, and he tells all of them like, "Okay, it's time to go." But he tells Eileen to stay back. She's incapacitated now. She had um, her friend was a lady named Dawn Botkins. So. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what do you think's funny about that? I, that's, that's funny. You like name the name me. Botkins? Yeah, it is funny. Uh, you you love cigarette pig? I'm a Dawn Botkins <laughs> man. All right, so Dawn Botkins was her friend till the very end. Like this this very sweet lady who at the time like she was like a rough kid too. She would get in the shit. They would cut school together. Yeah, and they would do all kinds of like crazy shit together. Dude, they would fucking. This was in Michigan, and they would fucking cut school to to go into Detroit to buy drugs. Damn. They were going to some pretty fucked up areas. But even back then, there was one thing that Dawn mentioned. So they mentioned. were like suburbs of Detroit. Yes. Yeah. So one thing that Dawn Bakken's mentioned about her, before I get back to this very fucked up story, was that um, when they would go on these fucking drug runs, Eileen was very protective of her. And she said she always felt safe around her because of how protective Eileen was. You see the same kind of protectiveness and the same kind of mindset when she meets Tyria. <laughs> Tyra. So, getting back to the story that, that Dawn told, she said, so this old guy tells everybody to fucking leave, kicks everybody out of his house, and Eileen stays back. Dawn wasn't with her this night, but later on, okay. after everything happened, Eileen just spilled her guts to Dawn about yeah. everything that had transpired after their childhood friendship. So Eileen said, after everybody goes home, this fucking old creep chief, he rapes her, 
and she's 14 at this time. He impregnates her. God damn. So this is 1970, and she's she's impregnated. Oh, my God. Dude, everything fucked up that could happen to a person is happening to this kid. Yeah. Jesus Christ. So she's visibly pregnant, and at home, her fucking grandparents are furious with her. They send her to a home for unwed mothers where she eventually gives birth to a boy. Is that a thing that still exists? I hope not. That's, I don't think I've ever heard that term before in my life. It's re- Actually, I shouldn't say that because there is one right next to the hot dog stand. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they close at five. They turn it into a home for unwed mothers. One stop shopping. <laughs> uh, okay. That's fucking crazy. So at what point? Like when she's like six months or, you know, visibly pregnant. I imagine, she goes, yeah. She keeps it a secret for I, as long as you, she can. I, there's no doubt that she probably kept it a secret because of the extent of the abuse that she was going through with, yeah. through this motherfucker at home. <clears throat> so kids were fucking with her. Her fucking family hated her. The only one that she could really... She had her friend Dawn Bakins, but also she, she was very close to her brother Keith. To that point, um, they had an incestuous relationship. Whoa. Before this? Yeah. Ugh. So add that into the fucking mix now. Jesus Christ. So she, she has the kid in 1971. And then after she has a kid, she, she gives him away. She doesn't. She never really speaks of him again. It was just under fucked up circumstances, and I imagine it was something she just tried to block out. Yeah. Um, a few months go by. She drops out of school. Um, this is this is all within like a three month span. She drops out of school. Her fucking grandma, who is one of maybe three people on the planet that care about her, fucking yeah. dies. Um, then immediately after that, her grandfather throws her out of the house. She's like fifteen. Six, fifteen. She's God fifteen at damn, this point. Man. So the the fucking the fucking the grief train never fucking ends with this kid. So nineteen seventy two comes along. She's getting into sex work and she's living in the woods. So she's not under that fucking roof anymore, but she's still, she's got to do some fucked up shit just to survive. Just to fucking pay rent in the woods. Yeah. She fucking, <laughs> you know, that shit's free. That's how she's feeding herself. She's, yeah. Yeah. God yeah. damn, man. And it's like, you see this with, with all the prostituting she does. Like, it's always like getting enough money to barely get by. Yeah. And did you see the movie Monster they made about her, Charlize Theron, in 2003? That's about her? That's about Eileen Warnos, yeah. Is that like the character's name in the yeah, movie and everything? Yeah, it is. Now, the one significant oh, difference about Monster, it. it's really fucking good, dude. Eileen, or, yeah, Eileen Warnos won the Academy Award. Uh, fuck it. Posthumously? Good for her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she was on the In Memoriam. It was, it was really beautiful. It was really touching, dude. It's the first time they ever coincided. But Charlize Theron uh, won the Academy Award. For her portrayal of Eileen Warnos. Yeah, okay. Um, well, so it's like the whole movie is like... So, they present her as having these redeeming qualities, and that's why she did all this fuck-up shit. Honestly, man, with, with all that I've learned about Eileen Warnos, I feel like the movie was very fair toward her. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they explain how tragic her upbringing was in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's like the first five minutes of the movie is just like them showing all this fucked-up shit, yeah. which leads to her hanging out in an underpass on the verge of suicide. Okay. The one significant... Damn, I gotta watch this now. Dude, the one significant difference between real life and the movie was her love interest. Like, in the movie, it's Christina Ricci. It's this cute little girl named Shelby. Mm-hmm. When in reality, um, her girlfriend, Tyra Moore, looks like fucking John Daly the Goffer. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty rough bitch, man. All right, so getting back to uh, living in the woods. So at this point... She's she's getting into sex work to survive. She's living in the woods. A couple of years go by. So 1974, she gets arrested. So she gets arrested for DUI and for firing a gun out of a moving car. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Dude. While she's driving. While yes. she's driving drunk. Dude. She's shooting stop signs. The f- I, I love this lady. Yeah, that All fucking right. rules. Yeah. <laughs> so she, she's drunk. She's firing a gun. And she's driving a car that's definitely not hers. <laughs> now, this is 1974. By 1976, she's like, all right, I need to make a fucking change. 
where do you think she goes to make that change for the type of person that would get drunk and fire a gun out of a car? She thumbs her way down to Florida, right? You bet your bippy she did, buddy. <laughs> Dude, she goes down to Florida. So this is 1976. This motherfucker out here batting bippies, yo. <laughs> Dude, 1976. So at this point, she's 19. Anything and everything fucked up that could happen to a person has happened to yeah. Eileen Warnos up to this point. She's lived so many lives, and they've all been shitty. What do you think happens to her when she gets down to Florida? Fucking a gator eats one of her limbs. <laughs> she meets a wealthy businessman, and she marries him. No way! Yep. God damn, what does he have, a fucking laser for a dick or something? <laughs> Just the worst possible <laughs> fucking... <laughs> Cuts her vagina in half. Dog, this motherfucker was president of a yacht club. Oh, my God. All right, so this guy's probably extra evil, what he does to her. <laughs> no, man. Really? He's, he, I, I don't know. All the information that I found, about, found out about him was that he was a normal guy. He oh, just man. saw a, a, an attractive young woman who seemed to like him. He was 69 when he met her. And Dude, she was 19. so horny. <laughs> uh, Dude, imagine how horny you get as a man at 69. I can't. Oh, dude. It's yeah. got to be like so a werewolf with a full moon. <laughs> it's all been working towards this moment. <laughs> it's this like one every... year when I will eat Viagra every morning. <laughs> just eat it with like an overhand spoon. <laughs> overhand spoon grip, just shoveling Viagra into your face as you watch cartoons. Just open Milk mouth and laughing. Blue pills. <laughs> <laughs> the, tr- the true yucky charms. <laughs> All right, so what what goes wrong here? Does the guy die right away or something? This seems like Mm-mm. she it was potential for her to it it turn truly her life was. But dude, at this point like her her experiences like fucked her up so bad. All right. Now, granted like I think you couple the experiences with the most fucked up DNA a person could have cuz on both sides she has child molesters. Mhm. All right. So is that, is that genetic? <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, got you, your 23 and me and bad yeah, news. The, like, <laughs> yeah. So they're only together for like a few weeks and they get married. Mm-hmm. So one of the things they enjoy doing together is they chill at the bar together. She can't keep it together. They go to a bar. They're getting in fights. All the, she's getting in fights with people all the time while they're at bar. He's just yeah. an old ass motherfucker. Yeah, he can't like defend her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. One day, this was the defining moment in their relationship. Um, she grabbed his cane from him and beat him with it. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> Florida was in her the whole time. <laughs> dude, and uh, it's beautiful disclosure. Uh, tonight, one of the gags that I wanted to pull was to get a giant candy cane and <laughs> smash it over your head. But unfortunately, the candy stores in my area are closed on Mondays. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's when the in- this industry night for the candy companies is <laughs> where everybody goes to the uh, the one central candy store and they all eat candy canes till last call. All right, so this- I, well, I I I had a cane multiple times in my life, a big one or a regular size one, <laughs> a little regular ass candy cane. No, a ca- I walked on a cane. I oh, had to oh, an walk actual with cane. a cane multiple times I in did college. It, dog, I did in the summer of 2012. When was your cane years? Um, I had uh, I got pushed down some stairs <laughs> in my sophomore year. What did you so do? 2006, what did I do to get pushed down stairs? Yeah. I asked for a cigarette <laughs> the wrong dude, party. I'm, I'm telling you, the cigarettes are the fucking <laughs> gateway to this shit, dude. You start doing You're cigarettes, right. John. Oh, my God. I'm telling you. You made fun of me fucking 10 minutes ago, and now look what's happened to I you. I know. I, I fucking see clearly now the error of my ways. <laughs> uh, yeah, just got... I was blacked out. Some guy just fucking socked me right in the face, oh, and no, I dude. fell back down like eight stairs. Did they catch him? He didn't run. <laughs> no. Did he at least get arrested? Uh, no. Heavens no. Oh, dude. Um, Do you remember his name? No, but I could find it. I let's do something to him. Yes. All right. Finally, revenge, and it's on the free episode. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then I was like, dude, yeah, puddle of blood next oh to my, my head, God, man. And then I'm on the gurney, and like all these people from the apartment complex are like watching 
me go onto the uh, ambulance or like get wheeled Jesus, out and I throw dude. like a thumbs up. Oh, no way. Like, Woo, he's alive. Oh, my God, man. Canes. Fucking rule, baby. Did you think at any point that you were dead? Um, No, but I think that's the time that my buddy had to hold my dick for the catheter to get inserted <laughs> because I was being such a stinker in the hospital. <laughs> And the constable had to handcuff me to the bed. <laughs> oh my god, dude! You know what we should do to the motherfucker who did that to you? Let's handcuff him to his own bed. <laughs> Put, they all take turns putting a catheter on his dick <laughs> while his kids watch. John, we're, we're going to get revenge. Yes, that fucking rules. I I will do this for you. I haven't thought about this in so long. Well, I'm it gonna, faded. I, I'm going to remind you every day till we till we do something bad to this motherfucker. Fuck yes, dude. All right, I love you. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so talk. So she goes down to Michigan, and within a fucking six day span, three shitty things happen to her. All right, July fourteenth, she gets busted for throwing a cue ball at a bartender. <laughs> <laughs> Gets busted for it. <laughs> like most people just get away with it. She pleaded no contest. <laughs> but she threw a cue ball at a bartender on July 14th. Uh, the 17th, her fucking brother Keith dies of cancer. Damn. So the second of three people who care about her are fucking gone now. Yeah. And then on the 21st, her husband, uh, Louis Fells, annuls the marriage. Damn. Because of the Kane incident? Yeah, that, that kind of... Yeah. That, that one was a tough one to come back from. The Kane that broke the 69-year-old's <laughs> back. <laughs> all right. So at this point, dude, all that fucked up shit happens. But her brother had a life insurance policy, and he left her... Fucking 10 G's. Damn. So to a lady like Eileen Warnos. In the 70s too, right? Who's a fucking... Who's Florida through and through. Mm -hmm. She's partying. Yeah. Non-stop. Even though... Even even still, she's still a little snicker to the core. Um, Within a couple years, you know, the money dries up pretty quickly. Yeah. But by 1981, she starts uh, robbing people. She robs a convenience store in Edgewater, Florida, and then she robs them at gunpoint for $35 and two packs of cigarettes. Not a bad score. Well, yeah, it's not not really a bad score. Do you want to know how she got caught? She was smoking, <laughs> smoking, counting the money just a couple feet away. You're not far off. They found her walking barefoot on the highway with a gun in one hand and $35 in the other. <laughs> In a trail of 20 to 40 cigarette butts <laughs> behind her. <laughs> On like the interstate. Yeah. Like where people aren't even Dude, supposed to be walking. Wild bitch, man. That's Dog, and like when she. Was she wasted when she was doing that? Probably. Okay. I mean, she was a full blown alcoholic, too. Yeah. So she did a year for that, and that, that happened during between 1982 and 1983. Okay. All right. She gets back out. 1984, she goes right back in for forging checks. Damn. So this bitch is fucking getting into everything. She's doing but it all. Still getting in. No matter how many times she gets arrested, she's still getting into shit. 1986, she fucking, she steals a car. And when she gets pulled over, uh, she uses her aunt's ID to try to get out of it. <laughs> that rules. It does rule. Um, now, things really start to turn here. Um, June 2nd, 1986, she robs a John in a car. After not making with the head or she, the pussy? No, nothing yet. So she negotiated, she, they're trying to negotiate a fee, and she's like, as soon as this motherfucker let it be known that he had money, yeah. she's like, all right, well, I'm not giving you any pussy, but you are going to give me that $200. She, she robs this motherfucker for $200. Really doing, well, that's not what she was about to charge. No, and it's, you know, going back to the movie that we mentioned, Monster, they throw out some some really low ball prices in that, and I would like to know if like those were typically the charges. For what she was charging. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, we were like twenty bucks for a blowjob kind of shit, dude. I think or it was, less. dude. I think it was like ten dollars for head and like twenty five to fuck. Oh my god! So I got a hundred on me right now. <laughs> <laughs> So you could fuck three times, get your dick sucked twice, and finger your own asshole for five bucks. Yeah, yeah, but who's gonna get me out of bed after that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. So at this point, uh, she goes to a local lesbian bar called Zodiac. Who do you think she meets there? I bet it rhymes with. I bet it spelled like it. Looks like it rhymes mm-hmm. with diarrhea. Tyra, a.k.a. Tyria Moore. Damn. She meets her. And this is her side. This is her fucking right hand bitch. This for... is her main bitch. Yeah. And this is like, you You see everything that she does. If you could tie it back to it being to provide for this woman. Damn. The money aspect, the robbery aspect, the killing, you know, I think she's just boiling with fucking rage. Yeah. However, there's so many times where they're just dirt poor. And she loves this lady and wants to take She truly loves this yeah. woman. And it seems like this woman loves her, too, and they at least have a lot of fun together. And it's her first lesbian relationship, right? It is, yeah. yeah. I mean, and up until this point, like, every relationship with the dude had been a disaster. Yeah. guys, Every guy in her life had proven to just be the scum of the fucking earth, taking advantage of her, and just did the worst possible things to her. Right. So now, she meets Ty- Tyra Moore... And they start living together at a motel and where shit really starts to turn is it's no longer just her trying to care for herself and sticking up people to survive. Now she's got to care for Tyra. Yeah. So I think you add all that together and it's just, you know, a lot of fucked up shit's about to happen. Yeah. So with that said, I think now's a good time to end episode one, part one one. of Eileen Warnos. We're going to head over to the Patreon, guys. We're still looking for Jake, too, so don't forget about that. If you're not a patron yet, go to patreon.com slash stinkers. That's L-I-L stinkers, S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. Come join us on the Patreon. Every part two of every episode we'll do will be on there. There's a ton of other fun stuff that we're going to have on there, too. Um, I have a feeling that most of our work related to investigating Jake's disappearance will end up on the Patreon. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of stuff related to Jake's disappearance is probably going to end up If you want to follow there. the case, make sure you join the Patreon. We're, we're fucking on it already, boy. I'm... We're, we're coming. <laughs> we're getting the diddler. Yeah, we are. Thanks we're, for watching, guys. And thank you for the those of you who have become patrons. Yeah, it's awesome. Really, it's been overwhelming really the amount of awesome. people that have become patrons so far. And... It's just incredible to have the support that we have. We love doing this shit. We can't wait to make a million more. But for right now, head over to patreon.com slash little stinkers and check out part two. Love you guys. See you guys. See you there.